Hi, my name is Mr. D and today I want to take a look at evaluating trig integrals. So we have evaluate the following indefinite integral and we're looking at the integral of cosine to the third x dx. So for problems of this type, whenever you're evaluating a trig integral, usually you want to make a substitution, but you want to do it in such a way that you have sine terms and cosine terms. And what I mean by this is we're going to make use of the equation sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So what we want to do is, for this equation, or this integral, we'll call this step 1. For step 2, we want to rewrite this as cosine squared x times cosine x dx. Because remember, cosine to the third x just means cosine x times cosine x times cosine x. But the goal is to get an even power of cosine or sine. In this case, we're working with cosine to start. So now at this step, we want to focus in on this piece here, cosine squared x. From our Pythagorean equation, this is uh, one of the trig identities, the most basic one that we should all know. We could substitute for cosine squared x, but we have to note that cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So now we're going to make the substitution, but it's important to focus on why we're making the substitution, which we'll do in a moment. So for line 3, we could rewrite this integral as 1 minus sine squared x times cosine x dx. So remember, all we did was substitute for cosine squared x, we replaced it with 1 minus sine squared x. Now the reason why we do this is because if we're dealing with only one trig function, in this case cosine, and it's a large power, in this case the power is 3, when we're dealing with large powers of a single trig function, we want to generate another trig function other than the one we started with. So notice in the beginning we had cosine, just cosine, but now we have sine and cosine. This allows us to make a u substitution. So what we're going to do is we'll just section this off. We're going to set u equal to sine x and what that allows us to do is we're looking at du is equal to cosine x dx. So remember all we're doing is finding the derivative of u which gives us cosine x dx. The theory behind why we're writing cosine x dx could be explained with implicit differentiation but for now just know that you're going to write du equals, and you find the derivative of sine x, but you have to write dx next to it because that allows us to make the substitution correctly. So now using this information, we could rewrite this line here. And we're going to see what this accomplishes in a moment. So now we have the integral of 1 minus, but now instead of sine squared x, remember u is equal to sine x, so we're going to replace sine x with u, so we're going to have u squared. Because remember, basically you can see it like this, if we square both sides, we wind up with u squared is equal to sine squared x. So that's really all we're doing, is replacing sine squared x with u squared. This comes from our definition of u. But now focus on this piece. The trailing piece is cosine x dx. But du is equal to cosine x dx, so all we need to write after this is du. But now for line 4, notice that this integral is a lot easier to evaluate than what we started with. Now we're dealing with an integral where we have a single variable and we don't have any more trig functions. So now we're just evaluating an indefinite integral with one variable. So for line 5, we can say that this integral equals the antiderivative of 1 when we're considering the variable u is simply u. So once again, the antiderivative of the constant term 1 is simply u. And now we could use the power rule. Remember, in general, and we'll just write this over here, just so you have it. The antiderivative of x to some power n is equal to x to the m plus 1 over m plus 1 when n is not equal to negative 1. Okay? So we use 
this power rule to find the antiderivative of u squared, which would be u to the third. So we're doing u to the 2 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1, which is 3. And now remember, when we evaluate an indefinite integral, we always have to throw a constant term c on the end. Because when we find the derivative of any function and there's a constant term, it always cancels out. So there could be a constant term, so we always write the plus c to indicate that. Trust me, you need to write this because you will definitely lose points. The professors love to zap points for not including the plus c. So now the last step, step six, remember we can't write our answer in terms of u because we started out with a function of x. So now all we're going to do is replace all of the u's with sine of x. So now we're going to substitute back in. So instead of u, we have sine of x minus, and now instead of dividing by 3, we're just going to write minus 1 third. It's better to write it as a coefficient, it just looks better. And now u to the third power is sine to the third x, and we have plus c. So our final answer we have sine x minus one third sine to the third x plus c. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on, it, on evaluating indefinite integrals. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.